as illusion begins to crumble and you begin to know this thing that cannot be described called happiness, everything changes. You become addicted to awareness. Awareness, awareness, awareness. Watch yourself. You had a reaction this morning when you were talking to someone. Were you aware of it? Were you not identifying with it? You got angry with somebody. Were you aware that you were angry? And were you not identifying with your anger? And later when you had the time, did you study it? Did you attempt to understand it? Where did it come from? What brought it on? I don't know of any other mean of transformation than awareness. I don't know of any other. If any of you cover some other method of self-transformation, I'd be very happy to hear it from you. But I don't know of any other. You only change what you understand. What you do not understand and are not aware of, you repress. You don't change. Just get repressed. But when you understand it, it changes. When you become aware of it, it changes. If you're lucky, if the gods are gracious, if you are gifted with divine grace, use any theological expression you want. You might suddenly understand who I is. You'll never be the same again. Never, ever. And that's where you'll dwell. And nothing will ever be able to touch you again. And no one will ever be able to hurt you again. And you will fear no one. And you will fear nothing. Isn't that extraordinary? You live like a king, like a queen. This is what it means to live like royalty, not the rubbish where you get your pictures in the, in the newspapers and where you, you've got a lot of money, put a lot of rock, and you're as terrified and confused as everyone else, and you're trying to hide it. When you fear no one, because you fear losing nothing. When you fear no one, because you're perfectly content to be nobody. Who wants to be somebody here? What's the use of it all? You don't give a damn. It doesn't matter. Success, failure, means nothing. Honor, disgrace, nothing. You make a fool of yourself, means nothing. My, isn't that a wonderful state to be in? There's a lovely saying of Chuang Tzu that I took the trouble, great Chinese sage, Chuang Tzu, that I took the trouble to learn by heart. Hope I remember it, but if we fail, it's all right. <laughs> It says, when the archer shoots for nothing, he has all his skill. When he shoots for a brass buckle, he is already nervous. When he shoots for a prize of gold, he goes blind, sees two targets. He is out of his mind. His skill has not changed, but the prize divides him. He cares. He thinks more of winning than of shooting. And the need to win drains him of power. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that an image of what most people are? When the archer shoots for nothing, he has all his skill. When you're living for nothing, you've got all your skill. You've got all your energy available to you. You're relaxed. You don't care. It doesn't matter whether you win or lose. Now, there's human living for you. 
that's what life is all about. That can only come from awareness. And in awareness, as I shall explain as we go along, you will understand that honor doesn't mean a thing. It does, it's a social convention, that's all. And so the prophets didn't bother one bit about it. Honor, disgrace, meant nothing to them. They were living in another world, in the world of the awakened. Success, failure, meant nothing to them. Somebody said, I think it was a man called Sidney Harris. I recollect reading. Uh, he said, the three most difficult things that a human being can do are not physical feats or intellectual achievements. They are, first, returning love or hate. Second, including the excluded. And third, admitting that you are wrong. My, easy as pie, easiest thing in the world, easiest thing in the world. If you haven't identified with me, what's the problem? So you cannot hurt me. Can you imagine that? Initially, oh, the old condition me will react, and you will be depressed, and you will be anxious, and you will grieve, and you will cry, etc. Before enlightenment, I used to be depressed. After enlightenment, I continue to be depressed. <laughs> but there's a difference. I don't identify with it anymore. Do you know what a big difference that is? Do you know what it means? I'll say this slowly. Do you know what it means to step outside of yourself and look at that depression and not identify with it and not do a thing to make it go away and to be perfectly willing to go on with your life while it passes through you and disappears and you're willing to let this cloud come in because the more you fight it the more power you give it and you're willing to observe it as it passes by do you know something you can be happy in your anxiety isn't that crazy and you can be happy in your depression. It's just that you got the wrong notion of happiness. You thought happiness was excitement. You thought happiness was thrills. You know something? That's what causes the depressions. You're thrilled. Have you picked up the anxiety behind that? How could I make that last? The first time I got a glimpse of this world, it was terrifying. Terrifying. To understand what it meant to live alone. To have nowhere to rest your head, but nowhere. To leave everyone free and to be free yourself. To be special to no one. To love everyone. Because love does that. It shines on good and bad alike. And it makes its rain to fall on saints and sinners alike. No difference. It doesn't depend on an object to exist. You don't pull it out. It's there, available. Like the rose. Is it possible for the rose to say, I will give my fragrance to the good people who smell me and I will withhold it from the bad? Or like a lamp, is it possible for the lamp to say, I shall give my light to the good people in this room and withhold my light from the evil people? Or like a tree, can a tree say, I'll give my shade to the good people who rest in my shade and withhold my shade from the bad. 
there are images of what love is all about. But I told you, we don't really know what love is. But it's right there staring us in the face in the scriptures. We never cared to see it because we were so drowned in what our culture calls love, in its love songs and its poems. That isn't love at all. That's the opposite of love. That's desire. That's control. That's possessiveness. That's manipulation. That's fear. That's anxiety. That's not love. And we were told that happiness lies in thrills. It's so painful. It really is so painful to watch those commercials. Happiness is a smooth complexion, a holiday resort. But you know that already. You know that already, or you wouldn't be here. You know it isn't these things. There's only one reason why you are not experiencing what in India we call anand. We have a special word for happiness, for this kind of happiness. It's called anand, bliss. Bliss. There's only one reason why you are not experiencing bliss. This present moment. And it is because you're thinking or you're focusing on what you don't have. Or else you would experience bliss. You're focusing on what you don't have. Right now, you have everything you need to be in happiness, bliss, anand, right now. <laughs>